In this video, we're going to go through how to create a professional project management tool. I already have my project set up. I have a package created called Com Object Zen Plugins Project, and I am using a library called the Object Zen WebKit. And this framework library is going to help us to get our project up and running very quickly because it's going to provide some foundational frameworks. All right, so let's run this project and I can show you what's going to happen. When I first learned web development in Java, I was overwhelmed by the number of technologies and frameworks that I have to learn. And I made a few mistakes along the way. That is why I created a resource guide to help you to avoid those mistakes and to streamline your learning. So go to fullstackmastery.com slash guides and then click on that download now button to download that free resource guide. So when I run this project, the web application that is launched is going to be listening on port 8080. So I'm going to go through my browser and navigate to that port 8080. And one of the things that this WebKit framework provides is a database connectivity. Because our project management web application is going to be based on a MySQL database. Our web application is going to be using a MySQL database. And this is just a way to connect to that MySQL. I already set up a MySQL database called Projects, as you can see here, and I already set up the user to connect to it. So now I just have to enter that credentials here. So my MySQL database is going to be in localhost, and the database name is Projects, and I created a login called Project User. Okay, so then now that I confirm the database um, settings it's going to reload this page and then it's going to create a default user All right so the reason why I am using this framework is because uh, once it connects the database it's going to create a series of tables that we will be using so you can see it create these tables by default and I'm going to log in as the admin user with the default password and once I log in, it's going to ask me to activate the server. Right, so I can sign in as using my Gmail account. So once I sign in, if I pay for this uh, license, it's going to give me a developer license. But otherwise, it will give me a trial license. And I'm going to activate it with the trial license. And once it's activated, I can now go to this admin console. Right. So with this framework, you get certain things out of the box. The first thing you're going to get is a file management, right? So this allows you to upload files. Also, you have a plugin manager that helps with the uh, life cycle of, the, of each plugin and the whole application life cycle in general. And you also have users, right? So we have a default user account called admin, and then you can also create new users by using this new user button. And we also have a way to manage API keys and we can set up email configurations, logins, and also the site information. So that is why we're using this framework because it provides all these functions out of the box. Okay, so let's go ahead and create our project. The way that we integrate with this WebKit is to create a plugin. So let's create our plugin class. I'll just call this projects plugin, and it's going to extend It's going to extend this um, abstract WebKit plugin, and then we will have to override some methods. And one of those methods is on initialize, and this is going to get called when the plugin gets loaded. We also need to initialize this plugin with some plugin information. So let's see. Okay, so here, you know, we have to pass in what's the plugin ID, what's the plugin name. Right, version and then this activation order and then we also need to register this plugin okay and what these two line will do is to create an entry in our plugins manager right here right so here we have already have plugins for managing API keys email the media manager the plugins and the users Right. So th what this would do when we create this project plugin is to create another entry in here, which is going to be loaded when this server starts. 
Okay, so let's restart this. Okay, now if I reload this page, you're going to see that now we have this projects plugin loaded, right? It's enabled, right? Because we um, said to activate on install. So the next thing they're going to do is to have this plugin create a menu on the left hand side navigation, right? And the way that we do that is to leverage this admin navigation to create a menu. So let's create a menu called projects. And then uh, we will give it a icon to represent a folder. And then from there, we're going to create some menu items. Right? And here we're going to call this all projects. And then who can access this menu? And I'm going to just see all log register users can access this menu. And then I am also going to create a tasks, right? Because projects have tasks, so we can do tasks also. So let's compile this and restart the web server. So then now that we restarted it, we can reload it. And let's see if we do see a projects menu, which we do. And under that projects menu, we're going to have two menu items, all projects and all tasks. And right, so let's start with the all projects. And this will allow a uh, registered user to create a project. So at this point, you know, we created a uh, projects folder menu item along with uh, two menu items under projects, all projects and all tasks. Now, when we click on this all projects, it does not go anywhere. Right, because we haven't defined anything to handle this event. We're going to create a page that's similar to, say, all users. When we click on this all projects, it will basically load a all projects page. So let's go ahead and code up that page. So the way that we handle events is to add a navigation element to the plugin. And then this navigation is going to take whatever the uh, hashtag is from the menu and then bind that to uh, a route, right? So in this case, we're going to say projects. Okay. Now that we define a route that binds to this uh, hashtag, we're going to have to also create a class that was going to handle this route. And we're going to start by creating a projects manager class. And I'm going to make this just a, uh, private class so then nobody else can instantiate it except for this plugin. Okay, and then I'm going to create a method to register the routes. Okay, and then here we're going to to all projects page. Okay, and then just for a test, we're going to just return this all projects page. Okay, let's restart this and see how that works. Okay, so here I'm going to click on this all projects and you can see that it did return that string. So it worked as we intended. To summarize, we created a menu item called all projects and it's binding to this hashtag called projects. And then now we just define a route that binds this hashtag to a route that is going to be defined in our project manager class, right? So this we're using Spark, right? And then Spark can then map this route to this method. And then this method is one that is going to render this uh, page. Right now, we just return a simple string called all projects page. And that is what you're going to see here, right? So the next thing we want to do is we want to you know, render this page as it is. But first, we have to create the database tables to store the data about our projects. Thank you for watching. I will put the next video in this series in the descriptions and comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you haven't already, please subscribe to this channel and also visit fullstackmastery.com for more great courses.